Some time ago, I did a video called The Lesson of Ghostbusters. Uh, the 2016 reboot Ghostbusters took a beloved franchise and gender-swapped the characters. Sadly, the movie wasn't any good, so in order to defend the film against any and all criticism, they claimed any Ghostbusters naysayers were misogynist. Uh, the idea was that this attack would somehow shame the fans into the seats. <laughs> It didn't work. Um, so, did anyone learn from this? No. No, they did not. Uh, the largest franchise to suffer from not learning the, the lesson was Star Wars. Uh, Disney uh, brought Star Wars back to great success at first. <laughs> With everyone knowing the Star Wars trilogy would feature a female lead hero... Uh, they showed up in droves for Force Awakens. Uh, the second film, Rogue One, also featuring a female-led hero, uh, was very successful, and even now, is still considered the best of the Star Wars uh, Disney films. Uh, then The Last Jedi landed like a hydrogen bomb and just devastated the franchise. It had many sins, but worst of all was the destruction of Luke Skywalker. And I don't mean his death. I mean the destruction of his character. Now, having been preceded by two female-led films, uh, you'd think the idea that misogyny was the source of fan backlash would be an absurd notion, but no. That's exactly how Lucasfilm and its allies explained it. J.J. Abrams himself weighed in, claiming if you didn't like Last Jedi, it's because you hate women. So did using the Ghostbusters defense template work for Star Wars? No. It didn't. Just ask Solo. Ah, uh, so the next big franchise to follow this foolish path was Star Trek. Now, the film franchise crashed and burned after its second film and its new trilogy <laughs> under J.J. Abrams. Again, the second film. <laughs> kinda, uh, but oddly enough, J.J. Uh, blamed his own misogyny for having a woman appear in her underwear. The first film had women in their underwear, too, but yeah, whatever. But Star Trek works best as a TV series, and so Star Trek Discovery was announced by CBS. It was advertised that it would be set in the original Prime Trek universe, unlike uh, you know the Abrams films, and would take place ten years before the era of Captain Kirk. It didn't even try to fit into that continuity. <laughs> <laughs> the idea that this would get past the Star Trek fandom just reveals how little CBS understands that fandom, let alone Star Trek itself. In an obvious course correction, they dropped their original direction and introduced the classic characters of Captain Pike and, and Spock. Or they will introduce Spock in the next uh, season that's just about to debut. Uh, however, in a recent Sci-Fi uh, Wire article, showrunner Kurtzman revealed Spock will be introduced as a broken character. Yeah. You know, this sounds similar to how Disney Star Wars dealt with Luke Skywalker. Uh, the main complaint from the writers and what have you when they were getting this off the ground was that uh, Skywalker sucked the oxygen out of the room. Uh, this was because the new characters didn't mess her up. This reveals the writers' inability to write compelling characters, so they tear down original characters to make the new ones look good. <laughs> well, if you have to tear something down to look good... It's not very good to begin with. So expect Spock to look pretty sorry con by comparison to uh, the character of Michael Burnham for Star Trek Discovery. So, uh, yeah, that's just not going to turn out well. Anyway, how did CBS respond to backlash over trashing continuity and other problems they've had, like uh, stealing the plot top to bottom from a video game? But, well, that's another story. <laughs> well, of course, they adopted the Ghostbusters template and said racism and misogyny was the cause of fan backlash. Uh, did it work? Well, they've already tried to course correct. So, no, it didn't. And it seems likely they'll screw up the course correction as well. Like I said, with you know Spock being broken and all that. So well, uh, good luck, uh, STD. <laughs> good luck. <laughs> then there's Maud. <laughs> uh, Doctor Who was already in a ratings downward spiral when the BBC decided to change its male character into a woman. Now, within the Doctor Who lore, to be fair, of regeneration, this was theoretically possible, so it wasn't as ridiculous as, say, uh, James Bond being a woman. But after, you know, 50-plus years, this was quite a big deal. 
so the new series debuted with great ratings, you know, the curiosity factor, but then the downward trend continued because the stories were lackluster with stupid plots and your typical PC political sermons and what have you. Uh, the recent New Year's Day special had the lowest ratings for a Doctor Who holiday special, and the series will not return until the fall of next year. Uh, once again, the fan backlash was attacked as misogynist, and even previous versions of Doctor Who were attacked as celebrations of the white male gaze. Yeah, yeah. Will this work? Well, <laughs> with the show taking over a year off, w w what do you think, huh? Yeah. So, one franchise that seems unstoppable would clearly be the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but some sense trouble on the horizon in the form of Captain Marvel. The warning signs are in the promotion for Captain Marvel, which is somewhat similar to Doctor Who. The, the focus is mainly on the character's gender and very little else. Uh, Doctor Who even had a teaser where uh, she walks into a room and the glass ceiling is shattered. <laughs> and, uh, well, uh, and thanks to Captain Marvel, we've learned that the word her can be found in the word hero. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, it looks like a uh, first female Marvel superhero film is all they've got going for this. Well, uh, DC, uh, which is mostly lost to Marvel, uh, already beat them to that with a much better character and a pretty good film, which is reminiscent of how they handled Iron Man, which I think you could learn from that too. And Marvel already had a female superhero played by an established movie star. So <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Uh, Captain Marvel is looking like a virtue signaling slap job. Uh, bigoted Misandra's comments from the star Brie Larson doesn't help either. Uh, but you know, one bad movie wouldn't bring Marvel down, but a bad direction would. Uh, recent comments from Feige seem to indicate that superficial PC diversity concerns would be paramount over plot and character development. Uh, if that's, that's the case, um, uh, it surely Feige knows better, and hopefully it would just uh, be a few uh, little t bones tossed to that crowd, <laughs> and the core of plot and story would still uh, reign, but I I I'm dubious. So will Marvel learn the lesson of Ghostbusters? Well, if Captain Mary Sue shows up at the end of Avengers Endgame and kills Thanos and saves the universe with a wave of her hand... You'll have your answer. Yeah. As the trend goes, expect the worst, but uh, hope for the best. Hope for the best. Thank you for watching and listening. Say, wh why don't you like and subscribe? And hey, look at those uh, link descriptions down below. That'll take you to my many stores that have plenty of goodies for you.